how would you describe Akotorofano? What would you want to share? Oh, about right from the, the point of contact, I, I describe it as higher university, yeah, because of you, Gabrielle, the way, the way you, um, from the first point of contact with you, how the midi midi that you know you midi midi me, you made me feel welcome. You made me feel, even though I was the old, you know, the old queer of the team, I never felt that of you. I just felt an integral part of the team, and and you don't feel that with a lot of uh, faculties. You don't feel that, and and that you you know you've come in, and it, it was we we were women from all different um, life you know, life uh, experiences. We were women from all different modalities. Some of us came there to be healed, like me, especially I, I came there. I knew that there was something that me need to shift and that was all that was there. Gabrielle Walker and Wonderkin, Wonderkin. So right from the, the point of contact, you were very professional your emails were beautiful. You could just feel that why they were coming off those emails, your messages, and you let us, uh, you know, make our payments. And I think that's important is to let people have a plan, a payment plan, rather than a, a big bulk. From meeting you, like I was all goosebumpy when I got to meet you, but the, the venue where you had our, our training was absolutely beautiful, like being up here in the Pilbara, you don't see big trees like that. And I was like, oh, it's in heaven, you know, in heaven with all those trees, the energy. But right from meeting you, you know, I loved how you had the um, the training room as a marae. Everything was like done. Your your kaupapa, your tikanga, was, everything was in place. How you had your beautiful altar with your nanny, hey, with your nana and all your gifts. I loved that. It was like, oh, my, you know, walking into the most – Beautiful marae, the most beautiful whare And then, of course, you had your mum there doing all the meals. And, oh, that was just beautiful. But right from the word go, the training, the tikanga, I held it in the highest esteem from, you know, your words, the way you greeted us. And I loved, I especially loved how you, we had our, you know, our karakia. Then we had our, we always had, we stopped and we processed, you know, I love that part because there's so much going on. We needed to just stop and process, you know, the teachings, the wairua, what was happening within ourselves because everybody was different. How we process things, everyone's different. So I was like, I just wanted to stay in that wairua mode, but I still needed to process. And I loved how every day you bring us together. It was just weaving that beautiful korowai you know, akotoro whanui kurawai, that I'm I'm apart for it to to the highest heavens, you know. But I just highly recommend this training for anybody really, because you encompassed the not only the cultural, but you were able to bring people that couldn't kore or Maori, bringing people that weren't Maori, and I think. Those women especially got really, really touched. Really, they felt embraced. You know how you, you place that whole akotoro whanui kurawai around us. Doesn't matter if you're Māori, non-Māori. So I recommend that for everybody. I think everybody should take a course with you. I think everyone needs that akotoro whanui training. You know, whatever modality you seek afterwards, or I think it just encompasses everything. So right to even now, and I love how you you have that monthly meetings. I think we need that. A lot, a lot of faculties don't do that. So once you leave, that's it, gone. And, and you're thinking, hang on a minute, I still need to have questions. I have questions. I'm still growing as a student because we are. We're student practitioners. And, you know, we're doing our hours but there's always something that come up and we'll feel stuck. So I'm I'm blessed that you always make yourself available. You keep that that kōrowai and that weaving going. So we're getting we gather we're building strength as we go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. That means a lot because I I feel the purpose is to activate healers and to, even if it's not within Māori healing, like you say, because the the principles of Māori healing and the po and the 
um, the pillars of Māori healing, I feel are important to all healing modalities in, in terms of the mana and the strength that, yeah. that they hold. Um, and that empowerment of knowing that, that we all have our own rongoa, we all have yeah. our own healing gift that we bring in. Yeah, so thank you. It means a lot. Uh, how would you explain the spiritual aspect of Romi Nomi? Deepest probably spiritual work you would ever do. And it's, it's connecting connecting to Te Marama. I've never had that before, going up those the realms and then going up and having the maraikura, which I absolutely love. <laughs> that maraikura, she runs it. <laughs> I love that. I'm just like, oh, in my in my zone when I get up there, take them up to the realms. And then I, I bathe, let them bathe in that beautiful lake that's up here. And I thought, hmm, I wonder what the, the kahunas meant when he gave me that name. Maybe I own that lake too. Oh, yeah, wow. I don't know. I just had that thought. It's the it's deep, it's profound. You can't even describe it in words unless you experience it. But someone beautiful like you, Gabrielle, how you taught us to, to travel up the realms and to, to you know, to meet the Atua and the Maraikura. I loved it. Oh, I just love being up there. <laughs> I find it hard to come back. And, and, uh, and then I go, okay, 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 my darling, to my client, okay, I'm coming to get you. You have one last, you bathe one last time in that beautiful lake and then I'll take you out. And then I bring them back down and I'm go, and I go, and how was it? They go, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Because it's so spiritual, nothing. There's nothing to compare, and and I don't like comparing modalities. I just feel, for me, that is 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 massive. It's absolutely, mm-hmm. it's absolutely mind blowing. Yeah, there's something about being um, up in Rangiati, up in the highest yeah. heavens, yeah. while also have having so much happening in the body, yes. being so grounded and so present, you know, in our higher self and our mana from all the realms. Yeah. Yes. There's, there's something for me unique about that. And it's really all about that mana, that integrity that you hold, that connection, and it's bringing, letting that flow come in. And it's it's quite, it's it's a lot. It's a lot as a practitioner because you have to, you, you get messages for them, you're reading the body, you're watching the flow, and then all of a sudden something will pop up like a message. So I'm giving these messages while the wairu is continuing the healing. So as as I took, you know, and I took that heavy energy off her, underneath was so many messages for her. I liken it to your shadow holds so much light for you. It's like it's like it hides the sacred part of us because we've been hurt, because we've suffered trauma, because we've been rejected or we've been abandoned. We hide our true our true gifts in behind there because. They're, they're safe. That's how I see my shadow anyway, mm-hmm. because I, I, I'm, as a young child, I was, you know, you, you're ridiculed because you see things or you talk to things and, and people go, oh, yeah, just, you know, you've been silly. And I thought, no, can, can you not see that? <laughs> so that's, to me, is natural world. That's the natural world. And that's the natural world that children see. And we mustn't cut their wings. That I'm so blessed that, for me, I thought being Māori was being matikite. Like, my, my, no one in my family was ever like, that's not true. <laughs> so I was just, like, going along my world, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't until I was like, oh. I was like, I think everyone, I think everyone holds a measure of matikite. Mm. I, I think that um, as practitioners, we, we tap into these, mm. tap into their matikite or tap into their gifts, and we're responsible to bring those gifts out because, that part of the healing as well. That's, that's just what I, I feel that Omi does. That Omi does that vibration out. They don't need that and reveals another vibration. You would want to share before we talk about the um, Pilbara Koha healing day? That Omi is moving quickly up here, not only in myself, but in other people. And there's only myself and two other girls up here that, uh, that practice that Omi. So we're quite isolated up here, but that doesn't matter. That only isolates us for a reason to teach us, to heal us. Because even though we, we're practitioners, we we have we still have a lot of healing to do in ourselves. And I, I speak speak um, on behalf of myself that we we carry wounds, whether it's childhood wounds. <laughs> I think that's a really important piece. Sometimes we're told like heal, heal thyself, and so people don't step into the call. They're calling as a healer. 
when actually learning those different textures and learning how to be fucking or heals us because we start to separate from those energies and realize that not everything we feel in the world is ours and so that it just starts to drop off through healing and then we can also do our own work on the side yeah. receiving and, and learning other other things too so healing is always ongoing but after you've done some of that main traumatic aspect where you can't function in the world after that, you probably can be a healer if there's a deep call yeah. to, to do that. There's no point where we're, we're ever not having different energies coming up. To I think that um, the, the most important aspect that I learned is that whakanoa. Whakanoa would be grateful for people who absorb energy, like empaths. The whakanoa teaches you to stay neutral so that you don't absorb that energy. And a lot of empaths do. They have no tools. They have got that tool in their toolkit. I can't say, oh, you need to fucking know yourself. They have what? (laughs) (laughs) Fucking know is a a massive tool for empaths, if only empaths need to do this training. So I think, (laughs) you need to do the fucking (laughs) training. So I'm still doing shadow work on me. I'm still doing a lot of deep, deep work on myself and getting right into the core. And I think that's what, if you find a, a healer who's still healing or still wants to, still, um, you know, humble enough to say, look, I'm still healing, those are the ones you go for. Yeah. I like the ones, I like her because she's real. Being real, being authentic, being in that state of whakanoa. The people people love you when you're real. Yeah. Drop If you drop a, a few words here and there that aren't, you know, you're not supposed to speak like that. You're a healer. I can speak how I like. So, yeah. you know, I'm honest. Honest in speaking from the hip, I think, is what uh, I could find in healings train me to do. You speak your truth no matter what because you're romi roming with your words. Yeah? You know, we are healers, but we also, we, we come in like, we come in with the romi. We don't come in, we don't come in with all, you know, light and fluffy. No way. The romi makes you speak your truth no matter what because mm. if you're like this in in this in this space you'd be like that on the table and that's how you got to speak to those heavy energies that won't move sometimes you got to really go in there with the romi yeah what do you think gabriel too too masculine i think it's good yeah, yeah. i think i think we have to be able to hold the masculine and the feminine yeah. to to do the romi romi and and it does um one of Papa Joe's quotes was around it takes courage to do this mahi. And I, mm-hmm. and I think it does. And it's not just courage to do the actual physical mahi, but it's like that courage to do that, mm-hmm. to, to speak your truth when you need need to or speak the whatever wider is coming forth, even if you're, you're like your human self is like, oh, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that words yeah. that, that, that their poet or whatever, their highest being is telling you to share with them. Yeah. to to affi them and their journey but but there's also that aspect i find sometimes when someone comes and they want you to be a certain way they want to place you on a pedestal yeah so that us being real brings it here like no you're responsible for your healing i'm going to hold this and i'm going to own that i hold this but i'm not on a pedestal like i'm here yeah. so that you can heal like i'm meeting you here and, and i think that that's what the realness but, but if someone's like, oh, I want you to talk like this or I want you to have all your shit together or I want you to be like that, <laughs> that's because they want you to be yeah. above them somehow rather than with them. The Romy not only cuts cuts through your physical, your emotional, your etheric bodies, it cuts through the ego, you know, as well as your own because mm-hmm. you, there's no ego in the Romy. It's like boom. It's, uh, it's calling that out, like calling those heavy energies out calling your the bullshit out is is how I interpret it because it is you know they they want you to um oh feel sorry for me or I'm you know I'm, I'm staying in victim mode no I'm calling the victim out you're not a victim anymore you are healed you know the miri miri the romi romi you're not the victim anymore no get yeah. up yeah step up you're not a victim anymore so that's what the romi romi has done for me you know I no, no light and fluffy. You speak your truth. You call that out. You call that out. No. And that, and that's how I am with myself now, to call myself out too, you know. Mm. Learning to put up those posts saying no, no more. And that's, in, that's, that's what the army does. Makes you, 
makes you strong, makes you makes you warrior up. What on me? It's very masculine up here. I'm very masculine, and I struggle sometimes to maintain my femininity, mm-hmm. my woman, my goddessness. That's why I can't wait for you girls all to come up here. <laughs> bring in that beautiful flow, you know. Bring in that flow because it's a masculine dominate, dominated uh, area. When when you said you did Koha Healing Days down there, it's like, oh, the Pilbara needs this, needs that wave of energy to come up here. I mean, there's 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 a reason why we got called down to Perth to train with you with the Akutoro Fanui. There's a reason. There's always a reason, you know. It's like the the Tupuna were lining us up, saying, "Come on, you girls." Mm. So two of us, three of us actually from the Pilbara, went down there to train under under your in, under your tutelage. And when we come back, immediately I thought, oh, well, can I do something up there? You know, ask them first. You know, always ask first, permission first, and permission with the ancestral guardians up here too. They've always even asked permission to come back here. And it's all I've been getting is the green lights everywhere. So I'm very grateful to them. Yeah, mm-hmm. very grateful to them. And and uh, I get really emotional when I when I speak to them. Prayed, I I kakied. For, for weeks now, that uh, we would all be in that right mindset to bring it up here. And, you know, Point Sampson is absolutely gorgeous. It's like a, it's going to be the whale season. It's right on the ocean. So it's going to be like walking into a marae. Mm. My, my role is to coordinate, to make you girls feel welcome. Mm. Um, <laughs> first, just for everyone who's listening, when is it? going to be that's important the, tw- <laughs> the, 20, the 24th and the 25th of july we'll, uh, there's a page that we've created um and it's called pilbara koha healing day anyone who's watching please um join our page you're most welcome to it's an open invitation for all the practitioners that train at akotoro whanui past present and i'm inviting the future because i just think that we need to there's, there could be a few people up here that think oh, I want to do that training, you know. So it's a it's a place to to grow, to sow seeds, and to watch them take um take root and grow. Mirror imaging what you offer down there, you know. Romi romi, miri miri. There's going to be a, a girl that we're going to bring in. That she's she's my po up here. She's Australian girl, and she's just got my back, and she's going to do reiki. Yeah. And and we, selfishly, we want you all to come. I'll see you in April anyway. I'm coming down. To, to total call you in um, the second part. I thought I'll to- total call you in the second part and I'm going to come with Auntie Jackie. Yeah. So I've, I've got a little page that I love. It's called Melani Massage, soon to be uh, named, named differently once I get my next qualification from Gabrielle. <laughs> um, and I, I'm on Instagram. I've got Melani Massage and I'm also under Katarina's Sound Academy. So I've got two, two pages flowing out on Insta. I like I like broadening out everywhere i just put my little flavor everywhere so yeah that's about me it for me but please come please come please come up thank you so much i want to honor you for holding that space and for for taking that invitation to do the koha healing days up there and growing those seeds those kakano in the pilbara in the north i can feel it whenever i tap in and i'll see anything that you guys share you you in particular that it's a really blessed and cared for seed up there and that yeah. it is the way to us traveling in ways we probably have no idea. <laughs> I, I wanted to close with that song and how you said he kaka no aho. That's a beautiful song. I, I just want to sing, oh, I'd like to sing a few, just the first verse, I think. Um, he kaka no aho, Irangi Atia And I will never be lost I am a sea Born of greatness Descended from A land of trees A kakano That's who we are and we need to grasp that, you know, we descend from greatness.